the morning show here on Arise News. World Suicide Prevention Day is an awareness day that is observed on September 10. This day is aimed at engendering commitment and action to prevent suicide all over the world through various activities. It also helps to raise awareness among people to protect their loved ones from suicide and help them deal with mental disorders. This day was first observed in, 20, in 2003 by the collaboration of the International Association for Suicide Prevention, World Health Organization, and the World Federation for Mental Health. The theme for this year's activities is working together to prevent suicide. And joining us now to talk about this year's commemoration is Dr. Kafaya Ugunshola, a consultant psychiatrist. Good morning, Dr. Ugunshola, and welcome to the program. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Yes, uh, thank you too for honoring our invitation. World Suicide Prevention Day. Um, what is the significance of this day? And how important is it to us here in uh, Nigeria? And what are the kind of activities uh, that may likely occur today that we need to be aware of? Um, okay, so suicide, as we know, is the, is the act of want of an individual taking their own life. And for the longest of time, people have not paid attention to it. Um, it's been assumed that um, it was a white man's diagnosis and that it wasn't something that was with us in Nigeria. But as we have seen over the years, the first time suicide was um, reported from earlier studies, it was sometime in 1962, and then the prevalence was less than 1% of, of 100,000 people. So less than 1 in 100,000 people. By 2012, it had risen to 6.5 per 100,000. That's, I'm quoting figures from Nigeria. And then as of 2000 and 2015, 2015, rather, the studies by WHO had put the suicide prevalence in Nigeria at 9.5 per 100,000. We're in 2020 now, so what we know is that those figures will no longer suffice, and it is to be updated by 2020. We need to, as Nigerians, realize that suicide is a complication of mental disorders, particularly depression. And as long as you're human, you are at risk of developing, you know, um, having clinical depression. So we need to tackle common mental disorders and emotional health problems that can lead people to having, to, to having suicidal behaviors, like suicidal thoughts, and going on to have an attempt and then attempting suicide. As part of this year's activities, the Suicide Research and Prevention Initiative, which is a coalition of mental health experts in Nigeria, made up of psychiatrists, clinical psychologists, social workers, and many organizations, are going to be having an e-conference where all these professionals will be gathering to tackle this menace that is, no, that is called suicide. Okay, uh, I mean, we're talking about prevention. So what should parents, loved ones, guardians be looking out for? How do you identify a suicidal individual? So the warning signs of suicide, you want to, so the first thing is, so there is, I'm going to be talking about, um, so there's this acronym that is known as WAIT. Okay. So watch, you're watching for, if you know that somebody already has a pre-existing mental health condition, particularly clinical depression, they are at very high risk of you know, of um, attempting suicide or having suicidal thoughts. Because at least 90% um, of suicide is due to mental health conditions. And 60% of those mental health conditions is clinical depression in its, on its own. So if you know you have a loved one who has a clinical diagnosis of um, depression, you want to really look out for them. Also, if you have anyone who is going through some very difficult or you know, challenging time in their lives at any point in time, you want to watch out for when certain behaviors change. They suddenly become withdrawn or they're isolating themselves. They're sleeping more than usual. It's like they're creating a cocoon for themselves, so they don't want to interact with the world anymore. If you notice that they are suddenly, maybe somebody who you knew to be very bubbly, very, um, uh, you know, um, very jovial, very warm, suddenly becomes um, you know, very calm, as though they, they suddenly have this new you know, zen, this new... Um, you know, demeanor, you want to look out for it, okay? Um, they also, they could start, um, ex you know, saying things like, oh, um, if I were to even die now, I wonder if the world is going to notice, 
or would, it, would I even be missed or will my, exist, will my absence be felt? So those are like expressions, indirect communications of what's, the, you know, what's going on in their mind. They could also start um, procuring means. Here in Nigeria, the most common means that people use is poisoning, organophosphate poisoning. I would not be mentioning the name of that, you know, that substance. They also, rarely we have, uh, because you also have people hanging themselves and jumping you know, from height or into the third mainland bridge. Rarely do we have the use of firearms. So if you have somebody who is suddenly you know, procuring certain means, getting ropes or, things, or stocking up on medications, cocktail of pills that they can use to harm themselves, you want to be very, very vigilant. Um, another one is Googling um, and um, visiting websites. So there are some suicide websites where people actually go visit to find out how to kill themselves. So these are some of the signs, you know, um, that you want to watch out for. And um, any behavioral change that you have noticed, you want to ask questions, okay? Ask, are you having suicidal thoughts? And then whatever the person is able to, and it's important to know that when you're asking people, they might not open up to you, you know, immediately. So you want to be very patient, you want to listen very actively, you want to you know, be very empathetic and non-judgmental with your responses. And then you want to reassure them, whatever you're going through, it's not going to be here forever. Okay? And finally, if this person is able to trust you enough to open up that they're having suicidal thoughts and even have a plan in place, you want to ask them to talk to a professional. All right, I want to talk about support groups and a support network. You know, how, how do people tap into support groups that can help them with this, you know, when they have suicidal thoughts and how they can get out of it. Because a lot of people always say we don't have enough support groups. Yeah, so the, I mean, um, when, when people say that they're not, um, they're not wrong to say that we don't have enough support groups, but we must, um, you know, we must acknowledge and appreciate a lot of other organizations who are working relentlessly and effortlessly, you know, to drive this message of um, emotional disorders and the possibility of people, you know, um, developing um, suicidal thoughts. So there are many. Shopping is one of it. Um, shopping came into existence about um, three years ago, thereabout. And um, I think we marked the third year in, um, 20, in um, March this year. So we've been around for a while. And what we do is to, you know, it's a structured you know, um, suicide prevention platform. We do a lot of advocacy. We actually run suicide hotlines 24 um, seven. One of them, we, have, we, we actually have one in an indigenous, indigenous language Hausa. We're hoping that very soon other languages will come on like um, Yoruba, Igbo, and then the other, you know, um, minor ethnic groups. So um, um, people should, um, I mean, so one of the things we get is when people call the hotline, for instance, I man one myself, and people are like, I was trying to Google how to kill myself, and then this number flashed up. So now it's been done such that when you Google how to kill yourself in Nigeria, these hotlines actually pop up and then they are, you know, um, sent our way and then we take it off from them. Many of the times from anywhere in Nigeria, if you call any of the hotlines, we would ask where your location is and then we will connect you to our you know, um, contacts anywhere in Nigeria. And that's what we've been able to do. There are other on NGOs, or, you know, as we know, on the, on, the, you know, on the cyberspace also doing fantastic work. So um, it's, something, it's a journey, it's a process that I know is going to get better. There is a lot of conversation around mental health right now. I know a lot of people are also coming on board. Where we are at right now is not where we were five years ago when I was doing my residency at the Lagos University Chin Hospital. I know we have made a lot of progress. I know that um, there is a future that is um, going to be that is going to um, be able to take care of many of these complaints that we're talking about. Dr. Gunshola, <coughs> let me ask you. Um, you know, uh, suicide is a crime in Nigeria yes. under Section Three Two Seven yes, of the, the of the Criminal, criminal Code. Yes. Uh, you have any comment on that? Do you think that suicide should be decriminalized? Okay, so that's definitely part of the of um of our you know um our advocacy for the longest of time. Um, I think sometime last year there was actually um, there was um, a Senate the bill was in the Senate and I think it had passed maybe the second reading, you know. And um, one of the things we were talking about was definitely had to be um, decriminalized. You cannot ask somebody who is ill you know, to the point where, I mean, so there are biological evidences to show that people who are suicidal or people who are about to harm themselves, there is, 
there, you know, there are chemical disbalances in their brain. So you cannot punish somebody who is ill. And you cannot say somebody who failed at killing themselves should get up to one year in, you know, in, um, in prison because that's what that, um, the, that, um, the Nigerian Criminal Code says, this, you know, the subsection 327 says, that if an individual fails at taking them, their lives, then they should be punished for it. Yeah, because if they succeed, they're dead anyway. Exactly, so when they are dead, you know, so you're actually telling them that do it because if you fail, you're going to jail. I mean, it doesn't make sense. And these people are ill. We need to understand that's what it is. It's an illness, you know. There are, I mean, there are a lot of, um, you know, there are studies, there are researches to back this. There is, it's evidence-based. These are disorders that are, that are all over the world, even though it's just becoming prominent, or I was just talking about it in Nigeria. But suicide is not even something that has that is um, you know that is that is not common in Nigeria. As far back as when when I was in residency, even before it became a you know a blown thing that everybody's talking about on the cyberspace, we've been seeing suicide in Luth. You know, it's just that because of professionalism and very and professional ethics, we're able to manage it, and nobody you know um, got to know of the cases of suicide that we're seeing. It's the age of it's the social social media age that is making it you know so widespread, and everybody's talking about it now. Economic downturns are a perfect storm to harm people's mental health and well-being. And uh, COVID-19 has brought a lot of that. COVID-19 has brought a lot of economic hardships. Yeah. As you monitor the happenings in Nigeria in this era of COVID-19, what is your biggest concern when it comes to the mental health of Nigerians and suicide rates? What are we looking at? Okay, so um, even monitoring just our you know, the hotline activities, we actually had um, a wave of, like we had this increase in the number of suicide, um, suicidal calls uh, on the hotline around May. And you would know, I mean, so that was around the peak of the lockdown as well, okay? Since the inception, or since we started receiving calls on the hotline, we had that first wave in, the, in May of 2020. And we know that um, some of the complaints were, um, you know, relating um, to job loss and um, pay cuts, um, we also had a lot of marital problems and strains in relationships. And then there was, just, you know, the, the, um, the, the uncertainty that also came with the COVID um, period and then the, you know, economic downturn like you have, um, downturn like, like you have mentioned. Um, these are things that are still going to be there because, I mean, with life, there will always be problems. There will always be challenges. What we're talking about right now is how to build resilience in people. And the, the theme of the in conference this year is actually towards a collaborative resilience because what we need to do as individuals is to build our resilience. And the resilience simply means ability to bounce back. After COVID is gonna be another thing. I mean, even if it is not something that is a global phenomenon like COVID, like COVID in your own home, things are gonna happen. In your own life, things are gonna happen. We need to equip ourselves with adequate coping strategies and skills to deal with these life events because they're not going to stop. They're all part of life. As long as we're still living and we're still breathing, we will have problems. So we need to all build our resilience and, you know, just like we're lying in wait for the problems to come. And for every problem that comes your way, for every difficulty that you're passing through, you need to reassure yourself and tell yourself, I'm going to come back. I'm going to bounce back through this. Well, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Ogunshola, uh, for this great insight. Uh, on the World Suicide Prevention Day. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome.